I've long had a great appreciation for the sculptural masonry work of Andreas and Naomi Kunert at Ancient Art of Stone. And when it came to finishing off the area underneath the front window of the house, I thought I would try to emulate their style and their artistic vision. Fortunately this spring, with the high runoff, there was quite a wealth of river stones to choose from that were accessible to the building site. The river was surfable for about seven weeks and the streams were running very high. This area we call the swimming hole and that cliff wall was pushed back about 30 feet from where it had historically been. And once the spring runoff dropped down you can see that the stones left behind in the same area here are numerous. So all of those stones were washed out of the cliffside, cleaned off by the rushing water and piled in the middle of this area and the creek's actually gone around both sides. But there's a good variety of volcanic rocks and granites and sandstones and other things piled up in here. So I really have my pick of material to use for this wall and I can get the tractor there. So for about a week every morning I'd come down here and load up about six of these five gallon buckets of stones. Just walk out onto this little island here and then select them for shape and color and you know just getting the, the cool ones. Good chance to lift heavy. I started using two buckets at a time to balance the load. But yeah, just across the little bit of the stream here and into the tractor bucket. And they're easy to take up to the house. Add to the wall. Not a bad office. I thought originally that I would flat mount a lot of these stones and then just do some more artistic rock work in between them. And here I'm wetting down the masonry to accept the mortar. This is my mortar mix. I'm using five parts sand, two parts Portland cement, a part of lime, and then just enough water so it'll stick to tools and stones and things like that but still be workable. So I wired about six of these on and did not end up liking the look I was getting, so I stripped those off and started stacking them flat. Every day, come out, do a little bit more. Starting to just let the rocks describe the pattern and not having to abide by structural rules like overlapping joints and things like that. I can basically just put them in however I see it Here's a little bit of detail on the technique I use. I'm you know, chucking the mortar against the wall, filling any small spots like this that would be visible from a distance. So I have the look of dry stack when it's all said and done. So with a good bed of mortar under and behind the stone, I can then come in and fill in with yesterday's dried mortar chunks to hold it away from the wall and save on a little bit of, of mud here. So just loading up behind it. And once I've got it good and full back there, I can work on the sides. I've got a collection of black stones that all have a roughly similar look and shape that I'm going to use to border this round rock. So just getting mortar underneath and behind. I'm trying to stack it as such that it would stand up without the mortar. And then you can see how the mortar is packed behind and underneath and over every stone. So here we are developing the artistic flow of this wall. I would come back after about an hour after I'd finished the setting for the day and tuck point with a screwdriver just getting the visible mortar tucked back in to the face of the stone wall so that from a distance you can't see mortar in this thing. There is the end result. Very happy with it. 
and I thought it might be a good idea to uh, do a little rock garden in front of it. So I covered that with landscape fabric and set out to get some more rocks. Now I can grab the melons and softballs that are difficult to place in a wall like I was building and use those in the rock garden. You can see here in the little trip across the creek and then the house is back here, so not too far from the build site. Here's the question. How old is the layer that is at the height of the creek? This wall is 10 feet. What's down here has been down here for as long as it took this much material to build up. And the reason I wonder is because down in this area we have some pretty wild volcanic stones that went embedded in here and clearly already been in a river rounded but now this whole area and a lot of these have pretty high iron content rusting and they're heavy they're not like pumice you, you, you would normally run into it. but there's a whole layer of them and I'm just wondering in what era were they covered up so I arranged stones on top of this landscape fabric and looked at them for the weekend, moved them around, and thought about the best design. I put this little platform in so that my wife could refill her hummingbird feeders and cut out the plastic underneath my planting area so that the perennial roots of the plants I selected could get in there. A lot of these are annuals. Uh, the columbine I think will do very well in this shitty spot, but I put in some spilanthes and marigolds and bachelor buttons and other things that should look nice in here. And that will keep the dirt from splashing up on the walls by having this rock garden and add a splash of color and some food from hummingbirds. <laughs> 